Welcome to Television Sydney News. I'm Bianca Martins. It's great to have you with us. In this week's bulletin, a service to be held to mark 12 months since the Quakers Hill nursing home fire tragedy, calls for Richmond RAF base to be used by commercial flights, and the men and women of Australia head back to Blacktown. But first, Western Sydney residents are being urged to comment on the widening and upgrade of Old Walgrove Road at Eastern Creek. Roads and Maritime Services has proposed works between Roberts Road and the M7 interchange to provide direct access onto the motorway as well as bus, cyclist and pedestrian facilities. The plans would complete a high quality east-west link connecting existing and proposed employment areas. This project will uh, provide access to more than 2,200 hectares of uh, employment land that will provide jobs for the future for more than 40,000 people. Roads and Maritime Services proposes to widen the road to four lanes with a six-lane section between Southridge Street and Walgrove Road. Fairfield Councillor Di Lee welcomed the upgrade. I think this will be, you know, boost uh, employment for the area and, uh, you know, it will connect certain artillery, certain roads, linking it to the M7 and M4. A review of the environmental factors for the proposed upgrade will be on display until November 23. Victims of the Quakers Hill Nursing Home fire will be remembered at a special service marking the first anniversary of the tragedy on Sunday. Quakers Hill Anglican Church is inviting community members to remember the 11 nursing home residents who perished in the November 18 fire last year and those who have died as a result since. 36-year-old nurse Roger Dean will stand trial over the fire in May after pleading not guilty to 11 counts of murder and 8 of recklessly causing grievous bodily harm. The service starts at 6am and will be hosted by Reverend Jeff Bates and Reverend David Hilliard of the New South Wales Police. Those who wish to attend should contact Quakers Hill Police. Hills Council wants Richmond RAF base to be used for a limited number of domestic commercial flights. Mayor Michelle Byrne says the move would provide greater choice in domestic flights with many Hills residents opting for the short trip to Richmond rather than battling traffic to Sydney Airport. She says it would also be good for small businesses and the economy and provide local jobs. A government and industry study earlier this year said spending $150 million could make Richmond ready for civil flights. Two dangerous southwestern Sydney roads are due to be upgraded. Plans have been released for the Northern Road between the Old Northern Road at Norellan and Mercy Road at Brinjelli to be widened from two lanes to a four lane divided road. Two lane Brinjelli Road will also be widened to a four and six lane divided road between Leppington and Brinjelli. Malgoa MP Tanya Davies says the works will help address the population increase expected in the area. A residence information session will be held at Brinjelli Community Centre on Saturday. Liverpool Plaza's Franklin's supermarket has shut its doors after more than 30 years of trading. All 27 staff were made redundant in a move retailers say will be a huge blow to the struggling shopping centre. Regular customer Peter Ostrovsky says he and other residents felt abandoned by the supermarket group's decision to move out of Liverpool Central Retail District. A Franklin's spokesman says the store was no longer financially viable. One of the screens at Sydney's only remaining drive-in cinema has been relocated, so work can start on a new $19 million hotel. The three-storey Abode Ridges Hotel is due to be finished in time for the opening of the Sydney Wet n Wild theme park in November next year at Blacktown. The cinema screen was relocated about 35 metres northeast of its former position last week. The 124-room hotel is being built by Amalgamated Holdings Limited, which also owns the drive-in. St Mary's and Mount Druitt are predicted to be hit hard by the state government's $1.7 billion education cuts. It is likely the area will be without a local education office as part of the cost-cutting plans. The Mount Druitt District Public Education Office at Emerton has been earmarked for closure with 23 school support positions to be abolished. The Kingswood office is also proposed for closure, where 18 jobs will go. The community is invited to join teachers at a community day of action at Tumbalong Park, Darling Harbour, on Sunday. Liverpool Hospital patients will be the first in the state to benefit from a new machine to help treat cancer. 
The $3.8 million tomotherapy machine precisely targets tumours without damaging surrounding healthy tissue. The radiation therapy is painless and done within seconds. Alfonso Quiroz is the first patient in New South Wales to receive tomotherapy for the tumours in his vocal cord and says he is very lucky to benefit from it. The machine is only the third available in Australia. Westbus and Metrolink have lost their bid to operate in Fairfield, Cabramatta and Liverpool. New rules introduced by the state government require bus companies to tender for their contracts and Transport Minister Gladys Berejiklian says the move will save the government more than $18 million a year for at least the next five years. Transit Systems Australia will take over operation of the Fairfield, Cabramatta and Liverpool services next September. The fate of the controversial Orange Grove factory outlet lies with Liverpool councillors after a motion to approve it was deferred last week. The former brand's outlet was shut down in 2004 when its development consent was challenged in court. The new development has the potential to bring more than 400 jobs and 63 retailers into the area. Liverpool Mayor Ned Manoon says he supports the project. Signs warning parents not to smoke around school gates have been introduced in Penrith. Ryan McLenahan reports. Penrith Council has installed the signs at 21 primary and high schools in a bid to reduce the risk of children breathing secondhand smoke. New South Wales Health funded the signs and selected the schools as part of its World No Tobacco Day program. Penrith Mayor Mark Davies says while some schools had a problem around the gates, others simply wanted to send out a positive health message. I think that uh, the placement of the signs are really strategic in, in relation to schools and school areas because you're sending a message at both levels, both to the parents and to the children, and building that awareness. We've had a small funding round to be able to do 21 schools. If we can increase that and increase that message and reinforce that message both to parents and children throughout the city, I think that's a great thing. New laws that will come into effect the 1st of January next year will also prohibit smoking in bus stops, taxi stands and public buildings. Ryan McClanahan, TVS News. The winner of the 2012 Sydney Peace Prize spread her message to Cabramatta High School last week. 70-year-old human rights and democracy advocate Senator Sekai Holland from Zimbabwe was the guest speaker at the school's sixth annual Peace Day. Miss Holland was tortured by Mugabe forces in 2008 and urged students and staff to use their heads rather than their fists. Ms Holland is also Zimbabwe's Minister for National Healing, Reconciliation and Integration. And in sport, more than 900 students converged on the Penrith Panthers home ground on Tuesday to try their hand at different sports. Year 5 and 6 students from 11 schools took part in everything from karate to cricket in the annual event at Centibet Stadium organised by the Panthers on the Prowl Community Development Foundation. The children were joined by Panthers players on the day, including first grade stars Nigel Plum, Blake Austin, Tim Grant and Panthers captain Kevin Kingston. They're always happy to see you, high fives all around and um, just really seeing the smiles on their faces, it uh, rejuvenates me into training as well, so it's great. So you don't mind signing, signing autographs all day because I was, in, I was in their position once and um, I'm sure they're probably just happy to get a day off school. So. <laughs> The NRL's One Community Ambassador and former player, Trent Barrett, also spoke to the children about the importance of exercise and nutrition as part of the healthy lifestyle. The Western Sydney Wanderers women's team has signed a second Liverpool player. 18-year-old Alex Huynh of Sadlia joins Preston star Catherine Canooley in the team that made its A-League debut alongside the men this year. Quinn grew up playing for Busby in the Southern District Soccer Football Association and is an Australian under-17 junior representative player. The defender has spent the last two years playing and training with the Newcastle Jets. Students from nine Western Sydney schools joined in a celebration of all things football last week at Football United's Multicultural Festival in Glenwood. The day was an opportunity for migrant and refugee students to show off their skills and play four small side games in a competition gala day. Football United Community Coordinator Asma Halal praised the World Game for its unique ability to connect with all cultures and help bring people together. Football United started in 2006 um, based out of the University of New South Wales um, and it started to work with refugees to try and promote social harmony, social cohesion through football. 
Held at Football New South Wales headquarters, the event also struck a chord with the state body's chief executive, Eddie Moore. Football is the global game and when you've got uh, kids from across the world that now live in Sydney um, wanting to play football, we want to be able to assist that and, and give them and Football United the opportunity to uh, enjoy the world game. Football United runs coaching clinics at 11 locations across Western Sydney and recently expanded into South Australia and the ACT. November 22 looms as D-Day for the Greater Western Sydney Giants when the 2012 AFL National Draft will get underway. And like last year, the Giants will have first crack at the most prestigious young AFL potential in Australia. Last year the Giants had the top five picks and this year the Giants have landed the first three picks. The team's success will hinge on who it can attract to Western Sydney. A champion muscle man is bound for the bright lights of Las Vegas. Natural bodybuilder Sung Sang Lei will flex his considerable muscles in the World Muscle Mania Natural Bodybuilding Competition on Sunday. The 34-year-old from Mount Annan won the under 70 kilogram title in the Australian Natural Bodybuilding Competition and Lay says Muscle Mania could give him a professional card. And finally, Blacktown was the backdrop for an historic celebration on Tuesday, marking four decades since Gough Whitlam's seminal It's Time campaign launch. Forty years to the night since Mr Whitlam strode onto the stage at Blacktown Civic Centre, some of the people who made history and those who wanted to be a part of it travelled to Bowman Hall as part of the Whitlam Institute's Back to Blacktown celebrations. Whitlam Institute Director Eric Sidoti says the original speech was the culmination of 20 years in opposition and set out in unprecedented details plans that laid the bedrock of today's Australia society. The hall was hot and packed. Um, we've got photos of people literally hanging through the windows. You couldn't fit in there. They're out in the corridors, they're out in the, on the verandas, uh, all sort of hungering to be part of the night. And of course there are a couple of hecklers there as well. Among those who came back to Blacktown were former Prime Minister Bob Hawke and wife Blanche, Mr Whitlam's speechwriter Graham Freudenberg and Nick Whitlam. And that's all for this week's Bulletin. For more information on any of these stories, pick up your local Fairfax community newspaper. I'm Bianca Martins. We'll see you next time.